The next thing is to see how we can add a dynamic Jenkins slave so that every time we have a job, when we call the labels, it's going to create a EC2 instance on the job and when the job is done, it's going to terminate that EC2 instance. It is saving us money and that is the goal of dynamic slave. So the next thing I'm going to do is to go to AWS console and I'm going to go to IAM. On the IAM, I'm going to create role and I'm going to click on create role. And I'm going to use my role for the EC2. I'm going to click next. I'm going to call EC2. Sorry. EC2. I'm going to use Amazon EC2 full access. Click on it. Then go all the way down and click on next. I'm going to call it. Jenkins, if you want, AWS role, and I'm going to click on create role. The role is created. Now I'm going to go back to services, EC2, and I'm going to attach the role to my Jenkins server. I'm going to go to instance running. I'm going to refresh it. I'm going to refresh it as you see. And I'm going to go to, I'm going to check my Jenkins server. And I'm going to go to actions, then security, then modify AMI role. Or I am wrong. I'm going to select the Jenkins AWS role and I'm going to click on update I am role. That is the first thing to do so that our Jenkins server is able to create our Jenkins worker or Jenkins slave EC2 instance. That's the first thing. The next thing we're going to do is to create a slave or a worker, Jenkins worker, EC2 instance, security group. We're going to go to security groups and we're going to click on create one. I'm going to call it Jenkins, I'm going to call it slave. Let's call it slave. And I'm going to call it again slave. I'm going to uncheck this one and select the proper VPC. So, as an inbound rule, we want our slave to accept SSH connection from the master. So, we're going to do SSH, on, it's going to be the protocol, going to be TCP on port 2020, and we accept traffic from the Jenkins master. So, it's going to be the Jenkins security group. So that is all for the inbound rule. For the outbound rule, we're going to let, leave it as it is. And we're going to click on create security group. But remember, what is the name? Slave. And I'm going to add a tag. I'm going to put name. And I'm going to put slave. You can put worker if you want. And I'm going to click on Create Security Group. Now that my security group is created, I'm going to go back to my Jenkins UI. And I'm going to click on Manage Jenkins. I'm going to click on Plugins. And I'm going to install EC2. I'm going to search for search for EC2 and I'm going to install 
Amazon EC2 plugin. I'm going to click install without restart. And I'm going to click on go back to the top. So now I have to set up the worker on Jenkins. To do that, I'm going to go to manage Jenkins. Then I'm going to go to node and clouds. And I'm going to click on clouds. Add a new cloud. And I'm going to add Amazon EC2. Over here, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it AWS Cloud. I'm going to click on Use Profile Obtain Credentials because we already put the, the role. We attach the role to our Jenkins Master Server. So we're going to click on this one. And the region is going to be US East 2. And we don't have a key pair. So I'm going to click on Add. And then I'm going to click on Jenkins. And over here, I'm, going to, I'm not going to use user with password. I'm going to use user name with private key because we are using private key to SSH to our Jenkins server. But if you want, if you are not using AWS, you can use user and password if you want. So I'm going to go as ID, I'm going to put CentOS, description, I'm going to put CentOS, and the username is CentOS because our AMI is CentOS. Over here on private key, I'm going to, I'm going to check on enter directly, then I'm going to click on add. After doing that, I'm going to open my terminal and open a new tab cd where i have my keys and i'm going to cut my key and my keys and i have one then i'm going to copy this one all and i'm going to paste it right here i'm just going to verify that everything looks good then i'm going to click on add then over here, I'm going to select it again. It's going to be sent OS. And I'm going to check for the connection. It said success. That is good. The next thing we're going to do is to add the AMI characteristic. So I'm going to click on add. I'm going to call it sent OS AMI. For the AMI ID, I'm going to go back to my AWS console. And I'm going to go back to EC2, Instance Running, and I'm going to select Jenkins. And I'm going to look for the Jenkins AMI. You can see over here, I'm going to select the same AMI ID. I'm going to come back to my terminal. And I'm going to paste it wire. The next thing. If you want, you can change the AMI owner or AMI user. I'm not going to do that. The next thing I'm going to change is going to be the instance type. We're just going to test it. So we're going to use T2, T2 micro, right? For the availability zone, you can add it if you want. If you don't want, you may not add it. But me, I'm going to add it. It's going to be US East 2B. I want it to be created on US East to be. The next thing I'm going to do is to put the security group. The security group, we name it slave. I'm going to put the name over here, slave. And for the Jenkins slave, I want the home directory to be iPhone home iPhone sent OS. And the users going to be Sun OS. Under 
AMI tab, I want it to be units. I'm going to label my server as Jenkins 1. And for the usage, I want it to be used when the label expression matching this node. The other termination time is 30. I'm going to put 2. That means that after 2 minutes after the job is done, and no job is created, the Jenkins slave will be terminated automatically. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna keep going with advanced. You can add user data if you want, the number executor if you want, and the Java path if you want. But for me, I'm just gonna add the user add the use subnet subnet id sorry for vpc i'm going to select the same subnet as our jenkins master and it's going to be the this subnet id i'm going to tag it i'm going to give it a name and i'm going to give it a value Jenkins dynamic let's call it the dynamic as a uh, as a tag I'm going to use name and I'm going to use dynamic Jenkins slave that is the tag I'm going to use and I'm going to keep going down for the number of instance I'm not going to put anything for the instance cap I'm not going to put anything and I'm not going I don't want my uh, my worker or my slave to have a public IP so I'm just going to leave it alone and I'm going to leave it to private IP and over here host key verification strategy I'm going to use I'm going to put off but for security reason, reason, you may put the uh, check new hard, but I'm going to put off. Then I'm going to go down and click on apply and save. Now let's create a new job. I'm going to go to new item. I'm going to call it job one. I'm going to use freestyle. I'm going to press OK. On restrict restrict where this project can be run i'm gonna put the label it was i think it was jenkins one let's see yes it's label jenkins one match one cloud that is good so the next thing i'm gonna go to build steps and i'm gonna select execute shell i'm just gonna pass just ls after an a ls right just one command I'm going to click on apply and save. Now I'm going to put this one side by side. This one and this one side by side. I'm going to click on build now. And you guys are going to see same pending. Jenkins doesn't have label called Jenkins 1. But if we go on dashboard and we go to manage Jenkins node and clouds we're going to see that we have a new provision wire and if we click on it we're going to see that it is it start provisioning a worker or a slave Jenkins server and it's waiting let's do this and if I'm on check this one over here you're going to see that we have a new EC2 instance created called Dynamic Jenkins Slave and it is pending. We just have to wait. Now it says running, so we just have to wait. Right? And you're going to see over here is waiting to connect to the slave. So we just have to wait. And when it's going to be ready, it's going to connect.
let's just wait a little bit again now it is connecting you guys see via over here connected and now it is downloading all the dependencies needed to run a Jenkins job into the slave. So we don't need to install anything in the slave. It's gonna Jenkins master gonna do all for us. As you can see everything is good if we go back to dashboard and we go back to our job we're going to see that our job is green check that means everything went well if i do console hub output you're going to see that everything went well and this is how we can have it we can have our dynamic slave now that we have our dynamic slave and we are able to run our jobs we're going to wait the job is done right and the job is done and let's wait like two minutes and see what's going to happen after two minutes you just have to wait for two minutes i'm not going to pause the video so that you guys can see what happened let's wait Like it is 5 11 p.m. So let's wait to see what's gonna happen at 5 13 or 14 p.m. Let's just wait a little bit. And you guys can see, it says what? Shutting down wire. Shutting down. That is how it's gonna terminate the dynamic Jenkins slave after the job is done. And it's gonna terminate it after two minutes of hiding. This is how we do that. And I hope that this project can help you build confidence and you can use this project and do it yourself and expose it during the interview i hope to see you next time please if you like this video subscribe and give it a thumbs up comment if you want me to get better comment and leave me some feedback i will appreciate it thank you and see you next time peace